Hi everyone, welcome to week five of English 3010. This will be just be the typical weekly video in which I discuss the concepts that you need for this week, um, your assignments that are due and anything else um, that is coming up. Uh, before getting into the material, I just wanted to take a brief moment to acknowledge the events that happened this week um, with the murder of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter protests that um, came up in response to that. Um, I sent an email earlier this morning um, kind of detailing how I feel about that um, and what the space for that is in our classroom. Um, and I hope that you'll take a moment to read that email um, and to think about the things that I mentioned. Um, I just wanted to say here that I understand that this has been um, a very horrifying week, um, a very sad week, a very exhausting week, um, and I do acknowledge that. And if there's anything that I can do for you all um, as students, but also as people, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at all. I'm here in whatever capacity I'm able to uh, be here for you. Um, I understand that that might sound hollow um, coming from your teacher and we're online, we're not even in face-to-face -face setting, um, but please know that it really do mean that. Um, and I hope that, um, that you're all doing okay, <laughs> I'll say that. Um, so let's turn quickly to the material. This is gonna be a very short lecture. Um, I'm trying to make it as easy on you guys as possible right now. Um, but let me share my screen. All right. How do I get there? We go. Sorry. Okay, guys. All right. All right. So here is what we are going to do today. Um, as I mentioned in the email, I have an updated or some updated components of the syllabus. Um, and then I just want to talk about creating a research question. So that's it. There we go. Oh, my computer's being weird today. I'm sorry. So here are the two syllabus changes that I made um, as of right now. Um, things may change further. Um, I am obviously willing to work with all of you on an individual basis, but these are just the two main changes I made right now. So project two is going to be due on Monday the 8th. So that is a week from today. Um, I'm giving you this extra time just because I anticipate that a lot of people were not able to work over the last week. I know that it's still going to be hard to do um, academic work right now. So I wanted you to have that extra time. And don't forget too that if you still need um, your own extension, you can still obviously request that from me. <clears throat> but project two, <coughs> excuse me, will be due um, next Monday instead of Friday, okay? Um, and just as a reminder, a reminder, you need eight sources for this project and they should all be peer reviewed articles or books. So this means that they most likely are going to be from the Wayne State Library database collection. I've provided you links in past PowerPoints with, um, or to the research guides for English 3010, which talks about accessing peer reviewed articles. So if you need a refresher on that, please see those or contact me and I can help you. The second thing is that um, as of right now, I'm giving you guys a second weekly response or journal that you can drop. So this means that you have to complete 10 of the 12 weekly responses that are due on Sundays to get complete credit for those. So as a reminder, if you skip the weekly response, you just don't turn it in that week, you don't have to email me or anything, and you will still receive the credit for your first and second skips. So instead of having one as was originally written into, into the syllabus, you now have two of those that you can skip. So if you don't feel able to do one this week, this is an opportunity for you um, to take advantage of that without feeling like you need to kind of save one for later in the semester, okay? Here are some upcoming due dates. These are for the next two weeks, just so we have kind of a broader picture. Um, you have your weekly journal response due on Sunday. You have the project two due on Monday, which I know I don't really like to do things, um, do have things due outside of our normal schedule on Friday and Sunday, but um, I didn't want to push it back by a whole week and cut into project three. So this just seemed like a good kind of middle ground. So it'll be due on Monday. Then next Friday, you have your third reading response. And then next Sunday, you will have, um, I believe, your six weekly journal response. Um, so this is what will be due over the next two weeks, okay? Just to kind of 
keep us all on the same page. All right, so I wanna very briefly talk about what a research question is and why you should have one. So research questions, um, if you remember from English 1020 at Wayne, um, are foundational to creating um, an argument for a research paper, right? You don't usually start your paper with, this is my thesis statement, this is what I'm arguing. You start with something that you're interested in, right? So research questions help writers focus their research by providing a path through the research and writing process. So essentially research questions help you connect things um, and help you work through your argument. So you might start off with a topic. Um, I'm interested in this general broad thing. You make it a little more specific with a question and then in attempting to answer the question, you should at the end of your research be able to answer that question with the thesis statement, correct? Um, this is not something you're going to need to do for this project. You don't need a thesis, um, but you do want to have a research question that is guiding um, or providing a path for your research. So your research question should be clear, focused, concise, complex, and arguable. Okay, so we will talk through some of these things over the next few slides. Uh, so steps to developing a research question. So I know you've already come up with one for your journal that was due yesterday. Um, but if you're still struggling or still refining it, this is, you might want to start here. So you want to choose an interesting general topic, right? You might start with just, I'm interested in this component of my field. Um, films of the 1930s, if you are um, a film major, right? That is a, a specific area that you're interested in. Um, you can then do some preliminary research, right? Find out kind of what exists already about this topic. Some of you might have already done this for project one. You might have already seen some articles that are, are about a question that you're interested in, which is great. Um, and then you just want to start asking questions, right? Which is why in the journal response, I said you can ask multiple questions if you're not sure exactly what path you want to take. You might have a few and you are going to see what fits your research narrative the best. And then you want to evaluate it, right? Does this question work? Does this hold up to scrutiny? Um, you want to avoid yes or no questions, right? Because if you ask something that can just be answered by a Google search, there's not really going to be a research path. You don't really need to research anything. Um, and the best questions will often start with how or why. So this is not to say that if your question does, does not start with how or why, it's not a good question. But usually, if you're struggling with a question, start trying to think of questions that start with how or why. Usually those will have very good complex answers. So some typical problems, students sometimes make their questions too narrow. So what is the childhood obesity rate in Phoenix, Arizona? So again, this is too narrow because it can be answered with a, a simple statistic. This is just like a yes or no question where you just have a specific answer. You don't have the complexity of a well-crafted question. So here's a way to fix that. How does the education level of the parents impact childhood obesity rates in Phoenix, Arizona? So this is a very nice way to take this kind of topic question and make it into something that you could actually do a research paper on. So we have the opposite problem here, too broad. What are the effects of childhood obesity in the United States? That is such a big question, right? Um, it would be very difficult for you to answer that unless you are writing an entire book about that topic. Um, it's not something that's gonna be answered in you know, an eight to 10 page paper, right? Um, so a way that you could fix that is make it more focused by saying, how does childhood obesity correlate with academic performance in elementary school children? Okay, so this question has a very clear focus, which you could easily, um, collect data, analyze it, um, and then suggest a thesis statement. So too simple. How are school systems addressing childhood obesity? Again, this is not really a question that you're going to collect um, unique data. You can do an online search and see what is happening, um, but you're, if you were to write a paper about it, it would just be, well, 
the Midwest is doing this, the Southern states are doing this, the Eastern states are doing this, right? It was very simple, factual responses. Um, instead, you can make it more complex by saying, what are the effects of intervention programs in the elementary schools on the rate of childhood obesity among third through sixth grade students? So as you can see, this question requires investigation and evaluation, which will lead the research to form an argument, right? So you need to have that evaluation component. You're not just looking for a question that you can say, here are all the facts, it's really straightforward, the sky is blue, there you go, right? So here are some sample questions. Um, typically we would, talk, we would talk about these in class, we don't get that fun. Um, but here are some questions that range in, um, I don't know, they're, um, what is the word that I'm looking for? Um, in their effectiveness, there we go. So what is the effect on the environment from global warming, right? That's an okay question. It's a good question to start off with if you're interested in um, that topic of environment global warming, right? Um, but to make it a better question, you can look at the second one, which is how has glacial melting affected the lives of penguins in Antarctica? So you can see, hopefully, how this is a better question, because this what question, you're going to just, again, you're going to get simple answers, right? What is the effect? Well, the ice caps are melting, um, the temperature, animals are dying, um, polar bears can't find food, whatever the effects are, right? Um, however, this is very specific. It's about penguins in Antarctica, um, and it's about glacial melting, right? So you might be able to find some ways that glacial melting has occurred and how you might um, extrapolate that that has affected the lives of penguins, right? So you have investigation and evaluation. You're going to be evaluating how it has affected the lives of penguins, okay? Um, in terms of a discourse community question, what does a nurse's day involve? So again, this question has some of the same problems that this first one does, right? You're just going to list things, right? You're going to say, oh, we see patients, we do charting, um, we talk with doctors, um, we administer medication, um, but you're not really analyzing anything, right? So again, the same thing in this what types of law pay the best. So a way you could kind of change these questions and make them better. How does a nurse impact the decisions the doctor makes? How can social workers use social media to connect with their patients? So these two uh, second question or these two last questions are good examples of questions that you could come up with your for your discourse community, right? So you want to ask a question about a component of your discourse community that you're interested in, but you don't want it to be so broad that it looks like these, right? We don't want a question that is what types of law pay the best. That's a very easy, simple, easy to answer question. You want something that's complex, multifaceted, um, and allows you to express your own interest, right? Like this question, social media is always really popular because it's really important for a lot of discourse communities. So a lot of students decide to go a route that involves social media. Um, so that is something that you could easily do, right? Self-care is another thing that is really important and really useful for students right now to be analyzing. How does this discourse community practice self-care or what are the ways that this discourse community needs to practice self-care to avoid burnout, things like that, right? You could ask questions about, if you wanna make it really relevant, you could ask questions about things like the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, it's also June, so Pride Month. Um, you could ask questions about health or COVID. So there's so many ways that you can make your question relevant. It might be a little more difficult to find peer-reviewed articles directly about COVID, but you can certainly find sources that are about things that are similar um, and, and kind of use that as a framework, right? And say, well, here is some research on a pandemic, or here is some research on the race riots in the 60s, and how can we take this framework and apply it to the modern day? I hope that makes sense. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can go, let me stop sharing, with um, your questions. You can have kind of as much fun with it as you want by making it really relevant and timely, or you could uh, do something that you think might um, help you just learn more about your discourse community, right? So there's no right or wrong way 
to do that um, other than avoiding the things that I mentioned, right? Like you don't want a super simple question that can be answered with yes or no's. Um, you want a complex, interesting question. I hope that helps you guys um, create your question. I look forward to reading your journals um, over the next few days to see what your questions look like at the moment and helping you guys refine them. For project two, please let me know if you have any questions about anything at all um, about the assignments over the next few weeks, the changes we've made, um, my big long email from earlier, um, anything that I can help you at all with, please feel free to reach out. Um, I hope you all have a safe week, um, a good week. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. All right. Bye-bye.